Hello. Um, hi, everyone. I know all of us must be tired with a fun-filled day with a lot of amazing talks across multiple different um, events that we have been having. So we'll be very quick. Um, so hi, I'm, I'm Shwai. I'm a developer relations engineer at Couchbase. It's a NoSQL database company. And with me, it's Ikansh. Yeah. Hi, everyone. So I am Ikansh, and I am a software engineer with Signos. And uh, Signos is a open source unified observability platform. Uh, yeah, so let's continue. Yep. So today we are going to be talking about how you can orchestrate scalable di di uh, di directed acyclic drafts or DAGs on Argo workflows with the help of Fabric ATS. Okay, so first let's also understand what, what are Argo workflows. Uh, some of you might already be aware, but just to kind of revise this. So Argo workflows are a Kubernetes native workflow engine that can enable you to orchestrate a lot of different complex workflows, primarily representing these as DAGs. Uh, so these are useful a lot for machine learning pipelines. Of course, typically with machine learning, you are uh, exposing a lot of really complex steps. So those can be directed or can be visualized as these DAGs, and they can also be used for parallel compute. And of course, there are uh, multiple other kind of tasks where Argo workflows will be useful. And primarily Argo workflows, since they are running on top of communities, they are implemented as the custom resource definitions inside of your Kubernetes cluster. Now, in terms of what are the different kind of CIDs that are supported, so of course you have the actual workflow CID, but then you might also sometimes just use a, temp a templatized version of these uh, workflows, so these are reusable templates that you can leverage, uh, so there are CIDs available for that. And of course, sometimes if you want a custom scheduler, so you can apply cron jobs and schedule these uh, workflows, so we have uh, CIDs available for those as well. And the primary way in which you'll actually interact with these CRDs uh, would be through YAML, or of course with any language that has support for Kubernetes client libraries. So for example, with Go, uh, with Python, you have the Hera SDK, and for Java, which is the one that we'll cover today, with which you can use the Fabric, uh, Fabric Gate, and we'll of course like introduce a bit more about the Fabric Gates as well. So uh, first thing we'll just also cover about JSDK, uh, which is basically a high-level uh, JavaScript uh, Java uh, operator in SDK that allows you to write uh, Kubernetes uh, resources. And of course, uh, with this, like when you're writing a Java component, you can actually write your custom resource as part of your um, entire application definition. And of course, it, had, it also has uh, support for automatic reconciliation for your application, and it has support for controllers. But going a bit step down, so with Fabric Kits, which is basically a low-level API, which allows you to programmatically configure your entire Kubernetes environment. So whether you want to create your namespaces, resources, or even apply YAMLs for services or deployments, all that can be done pro programmatically with the help of the Fabric Kits uh, library. And um, it, it, of course, like it provides your Java native interface to be able to interact with the Kubernetes API that's, uh, of course, part of the API server. So you can make direct calls to your API server with the help of this library. Now, in terms of, of course, the question being like, how are both of them different? So as I mentioned that the main difference is that Fabric Aids is a more low-level API that allows, allows you to directly interact with anything related to your Kubernetes cluster, whereas Joystick is more focused on actually building your Kubernetes operators. And primarily, another main difference is um, that with Joystick, it's mainly focused on the automated reconciliation, whereas with Fabric Aids, you can really do whatever you want because, uh, I mean, you don't even have to manually uh, run your uh, you know your um, like your um, any commands that you might pro probably use. You can directly do that programmatically. So now, uh, in terms of how you can use uh, Fabric Gates to actually orchestrate your clusters. So as I mentioned, that you can create namespaces, you can monitor your resources as well, all with the help of definitions. And we have provided some code samples along the side, which you can leverage. You can probably have a look um, later on after you get the recording. Uh, now, of course, finally coming to the fact of like how you can leverage Fabric Gates to actually orchestrate your Argo workflows, I'll let uh, Ikansh take over. Hi, everyone. Uh, so um, uh, we covered how Fabric Gates uh, can be useful for creating namespaces and deploying every other thing. Uh, apart from that, we have uh, like uh, uh, clients for uh, managing Argo workflows, CRDs, and everything. Uh, let's just go into the uh, demo first, and we can show you what's going on here. Uh, so I'm going to have a bit of fun with the demo. Uh, so currently, I have, uh, 
yeah so currently what we have let's let's see so uh, let me go into k9s i will check yeah okay yeah so if everything's visible so currently we have k9s we have all the default namespaces and everything when we uh, start with minikube but uh, let's have some fun so uh, cube cuttle create ns argo and argo namespace has been created uh, let's go inside yeah so we see a uh, argo namespace here but we wanted to do it through fabricate s so let's go into our actual code base so what we are going to do is we are going to make a new kubernetes client builder we are uh, in the pom file we can check we are using fabricate s uh, let me zoom in fabricate s uh, the version is 6.00 we are using jackson for uh, serialization and deserialization and lombok for uh, doing setters and getters uh, yeah uh, going into the main function, we have we are uh, creating the client, which is uh, through a new Kubernetes client builder. Afterwards, I am just having fun here, so uh, this part is actually not needed. But yeah, so what we are doing is we are just doing the namespace list. Uh, uh, it is finding all the namespaces. I am going to delete the Argo namespace, and then I am going to print all the namespaces that are available. Uh, yeah, so we see that uh, we deleted Argo. Uh, if I go into here, the namespace has been terminating and the namespace has been gone. So now we are going to go into the actual code that we are going to use to uh, orchestrate Argo workflows. Uh, so let's just uh, comment that out, comment this out. I am going to create a new uh, Argo namespace through Fabricate S. Uh, we are going to run it and as soon as this is run uh, we have a new Argo uh, namespace in uh, our uh, minikube cluster now uh, we have created the namespace we want uh, the Argo workflow installed all the basic things so I am just directly going to use the kubectl command to just uh, get the Argo workflow from uh, uh, the github repo but we can do that as well from the from programmatically but uh, uh, right now i have like two minutes and i have to show other things as well uh, so yeah uh, we have all the things set up if i go into k9s i can check into the argo namespace we have the argo server the uh, uh, workflow controller uh, everything which we want for Argo workflows is there in our default uh, in the Argo namespace. Now going into our actual uh, code. So what we are doing here is uh, we are going to uh, create a new class which is Argo workflow manager. Uh, I am going to create a new instance of uh, the Argo workflow manager. We have a submit Argo workflow method which is actually creating a workflow client uh, from a workflow class so i am creating a new workflow class and here i am defining the workflow which is the workflow spec and the workflow spe uh, status in the workflow spec i am defining what all the spec we need uh, so if we know the yaml uh, so for a normal yaml or the argo workflow yaml so i have taken this out from uh, directly the examples of argo workflow so this is a example yaml for argo workflows and uh, this spec is going to be directly used as a workflow workflow spec class in Argo workflow manager uh, class so we are creating a new uh, uh, workflow spec here we are uh, creating a hello world container we are setting the image the commands and uh, the arguments uh, we are also setting the name and the entry point and the labels so we are going to create a new spec and we are going to set the spec to the uh, created spec that the method that we have called we are going to set the status as a new workflow status. Uh, if if I go into the status, we have a conditions list and a string of workflow status. The condition class is having a string of type and the status. Uh, afterwards, we have the get metadata set name as hello world dash, and we can use the current time milliseconds for creating a new workflow with some UUID or something. And we are going to set namespace as Argo as we want to create this in the Argo namespace. Uh, now we have a workflow client that we had created earlier uh, in the namespace Argo and we are just going to call the create Argo workflow uh, method. So we are going to the main function, back to the main function, we are going to check if everything's all right. We have, have already created the namespace so I can comment that out and we are just going to create and submit the workflow. As soon as I 
submit the workflow uh, we see a new workflow has been submitted and uh, the new name is here if i go into our workflow the workflow is already completed uh, till now uh, because yeah because it was just a hello world workflow if i go into this i can get uh, all the data uh, here so uh, yeah so we wanted to print hello world and everything so we uh, have it here so that is how we can actually uh, orchestrate Argo workflows through Fabricate S. It is very simple, but we did not have time to create a very uh, complex example. So that's that's all about orchestrating Argo workflows uh, using Fabricate S. And uh, of course, you can feel free to uh, scan the QR code to give feedback. And this is a GitHub repository for our example on how to use Fabricates for creating Argo workflows. Thank you. All right. All right. Thank you very much. So, um, so that is the end of ArgoCon. So, um, I am, um,